Well, I'm a financial consultant for Walters Clear in a specific area of financial crime. Prior to that, I was a serving police officer with Royal Constabulary with the role of investigating financial crime and financing terrorism and also teaching police officers how to investigate financial crime and financing terrorism. Well, the key elements to bribery and corruption are quite simply the offering of a reward for doing something basically illegal. In other words, I offer you money to give me particular work. That's quite simply bribery and corruption. Well, the new Bribery and Corruption Act, uh, it's a long time in the making and replaces a lot of old, antiquated legislation. It brings into the UK a modern, updated version of what bribery and corruption actually consists of. And in fact, uh, it's very topical just at the moment now in May 2010, in that it uh, actually covers off uh, allegations of corruption in the sporting world. The buying and selling of players comes into it, the taking of bribes to throw games comes into it, the taking of bribes to do or not do certain things. It will increase the burden on the, on the regulated sector considerably. Within the financial industry, there are a lot of work, there's a lot of work being done and having to be done in relation to compliance. Anti-money laundering, treating your customer fairly, data protection issues, all of those are a burden on the compliance departments and the compliance environment. The new Bribery and Corruption Act just increases that burden. It is a very widely drawn piece of legislation, very much like the Proceeds of Crime Act, and there are big areas of opportunity for the regulator and law enforcement to come down very heavily on compliance departments. Well, it's very much a UK cultural, uh, culturally driven piece of legislation. Within the UK, we are comfortable with the concept of not giving and receiving gifts to do or not do certain actions. Now that's fine in the UK. In other parts of the world, it's not only accepted business practice, it's expected. This legislation makes no provision for that. And inevitably there will be issues where it's not actually bribery or corruption, but rather normal business practice. In the UK, that will not be accepted. What concerns me is that it will, it will obviously impact on sponsorship, it will impact on hospitality. So the old days of taking out your five best customers for dinner or taking to play golf at Wentworth may or may not be drawn into this whole issue if as a result of taking them to play golf at Wentworth you end up getting a very nice contract. Will that be assessed as corruption? Will it be assessed as bribery? That's still to be tested. The only way to deal with it is total transparency from the beginning. Make it known that you're taking them out, making, them, making it known and recording that it's taking them out as a reward for business given, not as an inducement to give business in the future. Subcontractors who are invited to bid for work in a particular institution, for example, they will take out the financial director, they will take out the head of compliance, because we are talking about compliance environment here. And they will say, let us do, let us give you this product. Let us supply this product to you. Oh, and by the way, why don't you pop over to my nice villa in Barbados for a weekend? And uh, of course, it's nothing to do with the contract that uh, we want to win. Quite clearly, that's a corrupt act. Popping down the road for a couple of pints and saying, look, we really want this contract. We want you to like us. We want you to buy into us. Let's talk together over dinner so that you can see that we're straight up guys. To me, that's not corruption. That's good business practice. But so long as there's transparency, I don't see an issue with it, except for the Barbados issue, which is not a good idea. It will grow, it will develop very much like the Proceeds of Crime Act, which deals with anti-money laundering. This legislation is very, very new, untested through the courts, and until we see some cases passing through the courts, it will not bed down particularly well. Inevitably, it will grow, it will contract, 
and there'll be a much more specific focus as the legislators and the regulators get come to grips with what actually needs to be done. Unfortunately, short term and mid mid term for the parole compliance guy, he's still going to get a kicking. I think it's a very, very good piece of legislation. Inevitably, within the UK, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue and it will not go away. So the regulated sector, those of us who work within the regulated sector, need to work with the regulators and law enforcement to make the legislation work. It will only work if we are allowed to introduce a massive dollop of common sense into it. And I don't think any legislation works without common sense being introduced into the equation.